we, we talk about here in this country, right, that we have freedom. And everybody wants to have freedom to do as they please. Freedom to smoke marijuana. We shouldn't have laws about marijuana because, you know, if I feel like smoking marijuana, I'm going to go smoke marijuana. Freedom to do whatever you want. And the thing is that we as people need to understand that there is a cost to freedom. Right? I mean, we don't have freedom without people sacrificing their lives to protect our nation. And I think freedom is something that is misunderstood by many people. Because if we don't have people out there protecting our freedom to give us the right to say what we want to, free speech here in America, where would we be? And the Bible does talk about this issue about freedom. And, and so let's just dig right into the scriptures right now. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside and he was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him and he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was the custom and he stood up to read. Okay, you're going to have to advance the slides for me finger is not working. <laughs> and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, unrolling it, he found a place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Do you understand that Jesus came because we, as human beings, have been in bondage? And the thing is that we misunderstand this thing of freedom that Jesus wanted to bring to us. And many people think that, well, God is there just to set a whole bunch of laws down. Don't do this, don't do that. And they feel like they're in bondage if they have to follow a set of rules. But the thing is, God knows what is best for us, and that's why He has those set of rules, right? If we understand God knows, He created us, right? He knows what's best for our life. And if He knows what's best, then He's going to want us to be as as uh, we are created in His image to become like Him. Yet we try to force our own way. And in Galatians 5 it says, It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. And again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through what? Love. love. You are running a good race. Who cut in front of you? Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through a whole batch of dough. You women who cook and bake knows what it's talking about, right? What happens when you put too much yeast in a batch of dough? Huh? You run into some problems, right? You probably, you know, set that piece of dough for maybe bread that you're making, and you go walking up, and next thing you come back, and you see this huge little thing. <laughs> Why? Because it only takes a little bit, right? A little too much. 
to spoil the whole thing. He says, I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish that they would go the whole way and es emasculate themselves. <laughs> you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in what? In love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor. How? As yourself. You see, you really cannot keep the first commandment, the greatest commandment, if you don't keep the second commandment. It goes hand in hand, really. Right? So what is the first commandment? With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all you got, that's how we're supposed to love God. But you see, if you love God with everything you got, you're going to love your neighbor as yourself because God loves them. And again, who is your neighbor? Yeah, it's easy to look at your family, uh, your good friends, your close friends, and love them. But what about those who are unlovable? What are you supposed to do with them? God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die for even those who put him on the cross. And it is for love, through love, that we can have true freedom. So if you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. <coughs> they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Do you understand what he's saying here? You see, there's too many people who think that just because God has given us grace that they can do whatever they want to because they have freedom. Yes, you can. But you know what? If you're going to do whatever you want because of the freedom you have, you're going to find yourself in bondage. You understand what he's saying here? That insisting on your freedom that you can do whatever you want to you go and do what is not according to how God designed you. You know, like say you want to go party all the time and drink. What's going to happen? There's consequences for that. God didn't design you to do that. He called you to live a holy life. May your unfailing love come to me, Lord, your salvation, according to your promise then I can answer anyone who taunts me, for I trust in your word. <coughs> Never take your word of truth from my mouth, for I have put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law forever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. I will speak of your statutes before kings, and I will not be put to shame. For I delight in your commands, because I love them. I reach out for your commands, which I love, that I may meditate on your decrees. Do you hear a repetitiveness in this song? You know, one thing that, if you understand Hebrew poetry, if someone is repeating over and over, just using different words, statutes, commands, laws, it's saying this is important. If you want to have true freedom, then you must walk 
according to God's commands, God's laws, God's statutes, God's precepts. If not, you're using your freedom. That's going to lead you to bondage. The Apostle Paul says, I have the right to do anything. You say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. You see, there's so many people that they don't look at the big picture of what God is trying to do. So they say, well, God's going to forgive me anyway, so I'm going to continue in doing this, whatever it is. Will God forgive them? Well, let's hope so, right? But the thing is, they're in bondage. They're being a slave to the thing that they're following or obeying. And they don't realize that it is a trap to keep them in bondage. When true freedom is what God wants you to have. When you keep His law, His word, <coughs> in your heart and you live it out. You say food for the stomach and stomach for food and God will destroy them both. But the body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body, by His power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and He will raise us also. Aren't you glad that God will raise us up? And that's why when we have people, loved ones, that pass away, yeah, we grieve because we don't have we cannot be with that person, but you know what? We have hope that someday we will be there with them for eternity. This world is just temporary, but that world is infinite. And how much more glorious is that going to be when we get to spend eternity with our loved ones? Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a the prostitute? Never! Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said the two will become one flesh, but whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee. Flee from sexual immorality. All of the sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You have been bought at a price. It was expensive. It cost the life of God through Jesus Christ who gave his all for you. Expensive. Costly. Therefore, honor God with your lives. How you doing? Are you honoring God with all that you do? Paul says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may increase? Abound? The more I sin, the more grace God's going to give me? That's a distorted way of looking at it. It says, by no means, who are we who have died to sin, still living any longer? Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death. We are therefore buried with him in baptism into death in order that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. We too might have a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe 
that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. And offer every part of yourself to Him as an instrument of of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Did he just say that? Shall we continue in sin, so we can have more grace? No way. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one who <coughs> obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God, though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. Mm. You understand this? That when you understand freedom, that when you want true freedom, that you have to live according to God's laws and God's decree. Because that's how He designed you. And His desire is that since you were, you, you were created in the image of God to become like Him, that He wants to dwell in you, that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And only when you understand this concept can you have true freedom without bondage. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Do you understand this? Slaves to sin? If you're a slave to sin, you're compelled to sin. If you're a slave to righteousness, you're compelled to live a holy life. That's God's desire for each and every one of us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you have given us your word to, to teach us about true freedom. And that your grace is so big that when we slip up, you, you forgive us. <coughs> and, and that's a promise that you give us, that if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just, and you will forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <coughs> and so, Lord, help us to strive to become more like you in all that we do. Thank you.